In this video lesson, we're going to tackle the metric system. There's a lot of different ways that you can learn the metric system. However, in this video, I'm going to show you two. The first way we're going to start with is something called a mnemonic device, or a way of remembering. Look at this saying that's at the top of the screen. Mean King Henry died unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk on Monday. This saying helps us remember many of the common prefixes that are used in the metric system. You see right below there that there is a way that we can write that out as we're doing maybe say a quiz or a test. So as we're saying that, we would write mean King Henry died unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk on Monday. You'll notice that there are some spaces there and there's a reason for that and we'll talk about that in just a moment. The U that's in the middle stands for the base unit. And so the U could be, for instance, a gram, a meter, a liter, or any of the other units that are common in chemistry. As we go to the left, this is where the units are getting larger. As we go to the right, this is where the units are getting smaller. It's important to know that the metric system is based on a power of 10, which makes converting very simple. Remember, as we go to the left, this is where the units are getting larger. So the D here would stand for deci, and deci is 10 to the first, or in other words, 10 times as large as a base unit. Hecto is the next one. Hecto is 100, or 10 times 10 to the second. Kilo is 10 to the third, or 1,000 times larger than the base unit. The next prefix after kilo would be mega, but mega is 10 to the sixth. This is why we leave spaces there to remind us that there's actually space in there for 10 to the fourth and 10 to the fifth. However, we don't have prefixes for the fourth or the fifth. In fact, as we go further to the left, every prefix that comes after is going to be every third. So for example, the next space after mega would actually be giga, and giga is 10 to the ninth. There's more prefixes other than those to the left, but those are the more important ones that you'll probably see. As we go to the right, this is where the units are getting smaller. So deci is the first D that's to the right, and deci is 10 to the negative first, or a tenth of the size of a base unit. Centi is the next one, and centi is 10 to the negative second, or a hundred times, or excuse me, a hundredth uh, the size of a base unit. Milli is the next one, and milli is 10 to the negative third, or a thousandth of a base unit. And then micro is the one on the very end, and micro is 10 to the negative sixth, or a millionth. Now in chemistry, we typically deal with smaller numbers than we do larger ones. And so it's important to know the units and prefixes that come after micro. So if we were to go three more spaces to the right, the next one would be nano. And nano is 10 to the negative ninth. Finally, three more spaces would land us into pico. And pico is 10 to the negative 12th. Now, like I said, there are more prefixes as you go larger and smaller, but these are the prefixes that are probably the most common in chemistry that you'll see. Now, there are two ways that you can use this mnemonic device in order to do metric conversions. I'm going to show you both ways. The first way is simply by moving decimals. So let's do a practice problem. Suppose I give you the number 483.6, and I want you to go from centigrams to kilograms. Okay, first thing I want you to notice is that both of those units have the letter G. So that tells you what unit you're looking at. You're looking at a unit of mass or gram. The next thing you want to notice is what prefix is attached to it. We're currently in C, which is centi, and we want to go to K, which is kilo. So we go up to our mnemonic device at the top and we see where these letters correspond. The C is right here, and the K is over here, which is where we want to go. So we ask ourselves, okay, how many places do I have to go from C to K? And we count. One, two, three, four, five. It takes five spaces to go from centi to kilo. Not only that, we go five spaces to the left. Whatever we do to the spaces, we also do to the decimal. So since we went five spaces to the left with our mnemonic device, we'll do the same with the decimal. One, two, three, four, five. Drop the decimal, and any space that you have, uh, any empty spaces, you're going to fill those with zeros. And so, after our conversion, our answer would be 0 0.004836 kilograms. Sometimes it's really easy to get confused, and you may push the decimal in the wrong direction. So here's what I always tell students as a nice quick check for yourself. 
Notice the units um, foot and mile. These are units that we're familiar with. Okay, what if I told you that you had two miles? How many feet would that be? Well, you might not know the exact number, but you're hopefully at least clever enough to realize that there's a lot more feet in two miles. In fact, there's roughly about 10,000 feet in two miles. Now, what I want you to notice is this. What did we do with our units? Well, we went from miles to feet. We went from a large unit, the mile, to a small unit, feet. So the unit got smaller. Well, what happened to the number? The number got larger. So there's an inverse relationship. If the unit is getting larger, the number should get smaller and vice versa. So let's take a look at what happened in our example. We went from centigram to kilogram. We went to a larger unit. So what do we expect the number to do? We originally had 483.6 and we were left with 0 .004836. So the number got smaller and that makes sense with what we should see. Okay, I said I was gonna show you two ways to do this problem. That was the first way. Let's scroll up and I'm gonna show you the second way right now. Okay, I've redrawn my mean King Henry saying so we can do it the second way. Let's rewrite out the number that I started with. 483.6 centigrams and I'm asked to go to kilograms. The second way is using a conversion factor. This is what we do in dimensional analysis. For some people, this is easier to visualize. Okay, so what I do is I set up a conversion factor right next to my number. Before I deal with any numbers, it's first important to write out your units. On the bottom is the unit we're currently in. So I'm gonna write centigram on the bottom. And on the top, I'm gonna write the unit I'm going to. Now that I have my units in place, now I can put the numbers. If you look at centigram and kilogram, which one is the larger unit? Remember, as you go to the left, the unit gets larger. So the kilogram is larger, and therefore I'm gonna put the number one. Now I wanna know how many centigrams are in one kilogram. Remember, every space you move in the metric system is a power of 10. Another way of thinking about that is it's gonna be a zero. So I'm gonna put the number one down on the bottom, but now I'm gonna count how many spaces I go from kilo to centi. One, two, three, four, five. Since I went five spaces, that's five powers of 10, or in other words, five zeros. One, two, three, four, five. There's 100,000 centigrams in one kilogram. Now, if I were to multiply through, my centigrams will cancel out, and I'll be left with my answer in kilograms, which is gonna get me the same thing. 0 0.004836. So there's two different ways to do the metric system. Choose the one that works best for you. Okay, I wanna look at one more example. Let's take a look at this conversion right here. 2.93 times 10 to the fourth deciliters into megaliters. There's a couple things I want us to notice about this problem, which is why I wanna do it as an example. The first thing I want you to notice is the fact that our number is in scientific notation. This sometimes can be confusing to students when they're doing metric conversions. The second thing I want you to notice, as you'll see in just a little bit, is that we have to deal with a situation where we're going a far distance, where we're going to have to count those empty spaces in our mnemonic device. So let's do this problem. Notice that the unit that's in common with both of these is the liter. So we're dealing with a volume here. So what are the prefixes we're dealing with? We're dealing with a lowercase d and an uppercase m. Now we have some issues here. In our mnemonic device, there's two Ds. There's one right here, and there's one right here. Which one is the lowercase d? The answer is it's the one on the right, deci. The one on the left is deca, and if it was deca, you would see deca liter, such as this. However, that's not what we're dealing with, so I'm gonna get rid of that. The other thing is we're dealing with megaliter. There's three Ms, one here, one here, and one over here. Remember, a capital M is mega. This M right here is milli, which would be a lowercase m, such as this. And this M on the, all the way to the right is micro. That wouldn't even be an M at all. That would actually just be the Greek symbol mu. Since that's not what we're dealing with, let's get rid of those now so we don't have to get confused. Okay, so if I look at where I'm currently at, which is deci, 
and I want to go to mega, which is over here, now I can do my metric conversion. Let's take a look at how many spaces it would take to go from deci to mega. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Notice that I had to count the empty spaces because it does matter because those are the powers of 10 that need to be considered. Okay, so we go seven spaces. Now, how do we deal with that when our number is in scientific notation? Well, that actually helps us out pretty easily because it's already set up as a power of 10. So, we just need to know, do I make the number 4 7 times, or add 7 to 4, or do I take away 7 from 4? Well, look at what's happening to our units. Are we going to a larger unit or to a smaller unit? Mega is much larger than deci, so we're going to a larger unit. So the unit is increasing. So what should happen to our number? The number should decrease. If the number is decreasing, what do we have to do to the number 4? Add 7 or subtract 7? The answer is we need to subtract 7 from that. And so if we subtract 7 from that, we'd end up getting 2.93 times 10 to the negative third. And that is how we would do that. If that way is not comfortable for you, you can always go back to the original way, which is using a conversion factor. And you can do that the exact same way that we've been doing it. So for example, you can set it up like this. 2.93 times 10 to the fourth deciliters. Deciliters goes on the bottom. Megaliters goes on top. Megaliter is larger, so I'll put a one. Deciliter is seven spaces, so we're gonna fill this spot with seven zeros. Calculate through, and you'll get the same answer that we did up here.